What's up, family? Thank you for tuning in to the Dream Nation podcast. My name is Casanova. I'll be your host, and I'm excited to be bringing to you entrepreneurs, thought leaders, and trailblazers from around the world. Stay locked in with us because we're about to go on a journey that will change your life. What's up, Dream Builder? We are back again, and we got an episode that I'm excited to bring to you because when I tell you today, we're going to talk about all mindset, but at the same time, just being very practical and making your dream become a reality, that's what I'm excited to bring to you today. So we have none other than my brother, Mr. Ken Jocelyn, on the show. Ken, you want to go ahead and say what's up to Dream Nation? What's up, Dream Nation? I'm a little fired up today, man. Man, that's exactly how we want to bring it. We want to bring it today. We're going to bring all of the energy, all of the smoke. Now, the way that I love to start off every single episode is I compare us as entrepreneurs, change makers, thought leaders to superheroes. Mm. And the reason being is because we're constantly flying around the world. I know you are. We were just talking about it. We're putting on our cape and we're trying to solve some of the world's biggest problems. Now, here's what we know. We see the Instagram. We see the YouTube. We see the boot camps. We see the S on the chest when it comes to Ken Jocelyn. But what we can't necessarily say or really identify is who is that Clark Kent behind the scenes? Mm. So if you could just answer that when the cameras are off. Right. Tell us who is that Clark Kent when it comes to Ken Jocelyn? I'll tell you, I'll I'll, I'll break it down this way. So out of the past 25 years, and we haven't talked about this, out of the last 25 years, half of that I spent in full-time vocational ministry, planting Mm -hmm. churches and pastoring churches. And the one compliment that I always got that I thought was the best compliment from my team and people that knew me was, they said, Ken, you're the same guy on Sunday morning on the stage. You're the same guy through the week that you are on Sunday morning on the stage. Dude, I'm the same guy 24-7, 365 mm. days a year. I'm the same passionate guy. Now, I'm 52, so my so a lot of my guys make fun of me. The younger cats, I've got interns here with me right now in my studio. Some of the younger cats make fun of me because it comes by. Now, I did stay up and watch a little bit of LeBron and Steph last night. But when it comes about 10 o'clock, bro, I'm ready to crash. But I'm telling you, man, when my alarm, by my alarm, if I make it to my alarm at 445, Usually I'm up about 4.20, 4.30. I'm wide awake and I'm ready to attack the day. Dude, it's passion 100%. So I would say that, dude, I'm the same guy on this podcast, off this podcast, if I'm with my kids, if I'm with my friends, if, with, if I'm with my real estate team, if I'm with my Gross Stat Drive community. Dude, I'm just the same guy. I'm passionate about life. I love helping business professionals build confidence, gain clarity, and create community. Man, I love it. Talk, people always ask me, like, where does the energy come from? Because I don't know about you. First, let me just ask. Do you drink coffee? No, it doesn't do anything to me. <laughs> I don't, it does I don't nothing to me either. whatsoever. It doesn't do anything so to me. So where does your energy come from? Where does the passion come from? Was this something that you lacked early on in your life that you were like, man, it felt like no one around me was fueling me up, so I had to bring that to my circle? Or was it something that you just always had and, and your your mom, your dad, somebody in your family taught you that you had to bring this energy to the table every day? Yeah, I don't I don't know that it was my, one of my parents. Dude, I lived in a, you know, I grew up in, I was born in Detroit. I grew up in Pontiac. Um, parents got divorced when I was eight. Mom moved to Georgia with us, uh, just right outside of Atlanta. Sixth grade through twelfth grade, I moved six times back and forth between my mom and my dad. Um, I grew up in a in a pretty rough neighborhood in Pontiac. I went to twelve schools in twelve years. Um, I was always the guy in the neighborhood that put the that put the the basketball game together or put the football game together in the schoolyard. Like I was that guy. Like, hey, we're gonna play at six o'clock. Who's in? Boom! I've, I've got my checklist, and I'm you know I was always that guy. But August of 1993, when I gave my life to Christ, um, was a game changer for me, and really, and really, that's when I had my aha moment of, dude, God, you made me for more than what I've been experiencing. And probably from that point forward, Casanova is where it really began to, I was 25 years old. I didn't grow up in church, didn't really know anything about any of that kind of stuff. That's probably was the, was the moment in August, it was August 22nd, 1993, was probably the moment for me where I began to develop a passion because and not just for, not just for my faith, but in that, dude, God, you love me enough that Jesus did what he did for me. And wow. Man, there's there's more to this life than what just my nine to five thing that I'm doing, and that's where the passion began to to birth and the energy um, probably begin to birth. And people ask me a lot of times, they say, "Ken, do you miss pastoring Sunday?" Dude, I do as much pastoring right now in my community 
to be honest with you, with people that would never set foot in my church on a Sunday, I do as much pastoring and life mentorship and helping people win and figure out what life is all about now than I than I did as much as when I was in full time vocational ministry. Man, I love it. I, I don't love know it. if that answers your question. That may that may have been a lot for that one little small question. No, man, but I love it. And, it. and it just shows that this didn't just start overnight, right? It's always been who no. you are. And I think a lot of the times when people see success, right, in any level, they always just think that like, oh, he created this two years ago, three years ago, maybe not overnight, but like he just, he just, this just now started. So he's excited about it now. But it's like, no, I've always been building this. I've always been building community, right. just like you said, when I was back in high school and I was putting together the football games and, yep, yep. and all these other things. So. Talk to me about where did entrepreneurship come in for you, though? Because obviously when you're in ministering or, or pastoring and, and you also are a military guy, right? So yep. so there's a lot of structure with there. There's a lot of corporate with there. To, to, so to break out of those chains and to have a transition like that, that's a huge change. Where did that come in for you of why you decided, hey, I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to lead rather than being a part of someone else's kind of system so sorry. yeah I, I it was um i was working i got out of the air force i moved back to georgia um got a job i worked for seven years i missed like two days of work um about three days before christmas they called me in and said hey we're doing away with your position i was in computer operations what i did in the air force worked in computer operations there at that, at that company and they said hey we're doing away with your position and i just this was three days before christmas in 1997 i believe it was and I just said, you know what? I said, okay. I said, if God shuts this door, he's got another one for me. And mm -hmm. we were in the process of planting a church. And so I started I started with that with that church, that brand new church plant. I, I grew that youth ministry from about, I don't know, half a dozen kids to about 250 to 350 on a weekly basis. One of the largest youth ministries in the country. I started speaking around the country. That's probably when I first went. And, and, and people go, well, that's, is that entrepreneurial? Yes, it's, it's a growth mindset. And mm -hmm. it is, it, that's where I really started to discover, wow, I can do more than I ever imagined I could do. Did that, traveled um, with a buddy of mine that played in the NBA for a while. We spoke to about 350,000 high school students in one year. Traveled around the country speaking to high school students. Had it needed a break because I had two little baby girls at the time and went to work for a buddy of mine who owned a mortgage company. My best friend since I was seven years old. I, I literally said, Chris, dude, I, I need to do something else. I'm traveling. I can't do this anymore. He, he, he said, man, come, I'll give you a job. Originating mortgage loans. And I, I would never forget, walked in his office. He handed me keys to an LS400 Lexus. He goes, there's your office. Now go figure it out. I made $146,000 my first year. And it was mm. just, a, it was a natural thing for me because I had already, I had already hit that, had that aha moment where it's like, I can do this. Like I can right. be successful. And from that point, I worked for him for a couple of years, started my own mortgage company. I, as I shared with you offline, we've done, I've done over 250, probably close to $300 million in real estate transactions as a mortgage broker. And now as a real estate um, agent with a team. And so it, it was just, it was just, it was a progression. It, there's no overnight success. I mean, Greg right. Reed, I just had on my podcast, Greg writes in three feet from gold. He talks about the 19 year overnight success it, it, right. overnight successes take time. Hmm. So let me ask you this. So you, you get into all of these, these different businesses. How were you able to continuously tell yourself that you're good enough? Because I think that a lot of people, they say, okay, I, I agree. I'm willing to put in the work and they look at the long-term vision to say, okay, even if this takes 19 years, but in the short term of right now, there's that limiting belief. How were you able to continue to keep transitioning? Was it purely God? Was it anything that you read? What was the mantra or the affirmation that you were telling yourself that said, hey, I can win in any scenario? It's always, 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 it always. People say, how have you done what, even in GSD, we're gonna have our first six figure month and we're not even but a year old. Like our mm. coaching and consulting, we're a year old. We're gonna have a six figure month this month or right at it. People go, how do you do what you do? Listen, if you will surround yourself with world-class people that are in your field, regardless of what you do and learn from them, Add value, not just go and take. I say this all the time. Get around people who want something for you, not from you. Mm. Get around people who want something for you, not from you. Dude, from when I first started officiating basketball in 1993, my first clinician when I stepped on a high school basketball, I've been refereeing like little kids, like Park and Rec. 
my first clinician was was a was a woman named Sally Bell, who's worked thirteen or fourteen women's national championship games. She was a supervisor for seven Division One conferences. She was she was the she was the one woman chosen from America in nineteen ninety six to represent the United States to officiate the Olympic Games in Atlanta. Wow. I mean, she's one of the top women's from there to ministry. Surrounding myself with people like Ron Luce and people your your audience is probably not going to know, but people who were the top of the top of the top, having just literally unbelievable connections and moments with people to to people like Grant Cardone. Literally, in 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 in, I had no idea who Grant Cardone was in September October of 2019. I saw him on Instagram. I went from Instagram to a mentorship program to go into a boot camp, to literally having what I tell Grant, the businessman on the inside of me just getting born again and revitalized again, to growing a real estate company, to just getting around the best people in the world and building a relationship with them in whatever area or whatever field that I'm in, that's where that's where, because you can't, there's no such thing as an overnight success, but there is such a thing as circumventing the time and process it takes for you to grow as an individual and as a leader and as a business professional. You can grow your business leaps and bounds in whatever profession you're in if you get around the right people who have been down the road and who have, what I, what I say to my clients all the time, who have that 10,000 foot view of what's going on in your life. I love it. I love it. And and this is going to be such an amazing conversation. I already know because there's a lot of people right now that says, okay, I, I love what he's saying. But one thing he said was add value. And that's something that's been thrown around a lot and people struggle with how do I add value? So something, someone who wants something for you, not from you. I mm -hmm. meet Ken. Ken inspires me. I see him at a conference and I'm like, oh man, I need that guy to coach me. I need that guy to mentor me. But I don't, and I need it one-on-one, -on -one, right? I've seen, I've read some books, things like that, but I don't necessarily necessarily know what can I give to him what's a way that people can add value because I think a lot of people struggle with that they don't know what does that look like how can I add value to someone like you successful people and and then we maybe we can get some time to talk about the difference between success and significance mm. successful people who understand significance so we teach at GSD we teach success through the lens of significance how can I help other people around me win and so I had a leader do that in my life. She mm -hmm. sat me down at lunch after I spoke between John Maxwell. You heard of John Maxwell? Of course, everybody yeah, oh knows, yeah. right? Like he's one of the right. top authors ever on leadership. Ever. I spoke between John Maxwell and Jeannie, who was one of my who was one of my mentors and heroes. She sat me down the next day, and I'm I'm in front of seven to eight thousand people. I'm thirty years old, 31, 32 years old at this huge event, and she goes, "Ken, do you want to be successful or do you want to be significant? Because they're two vastly different things." And for over 20 years, I have leaned into how can I live a significant life? And that is, my mindset is how can I help the people around me win? Not how, not how can I help my business win, but how can I help the people around me win? And when you lean into that, and it's the same way, how can I add value? Same thing, Greg Reed, I just, I just talked to Greg. He's on the Napoleon Hill Foundation, wrote Three Free From Gold with Sharon Lecter. He's got a hundred and some odd books, a major motion picture film on Netflix that's trending that he did for um, Frank, who is the Make-A-Wish founder. Um, and and he, he says this all the time, specif specificity. I think, that's, I think that's the right word. Yeah, it is, Be, you're right. Because significant leaders who have been successful, they want to help other people. Like, dude, that that's when I lay my head down on the pillow at nighttime and I've got an intern or my team and I help them win, I will go to bed with a higher level of fulfillment than somebody who just added another comma in their bank account that day. Right. Two totally different things. Significance and success, two totally different things. If you start out to be significant, you're always going to be successful. If you start out to be successful, you may or may not find significance, and you're probably going to leave a trail of damage behind you along the way. Man, I absolutely, I love that. And I'm sure somebody else is going to recite that one day, and they're going to say, I heard that from Ken Jocelyn on the show. And that's so powerful. It, it gets me to thinking two things. First, it's like the Zig Ziglar quote, right, which we've all heard. If you help enough people get what My they favorite. want. 
in return, you'll get any and everything that you want. That's and right. the second thing was, uh, of course, we talked about I'm here in Omaha, Nebraska, and I tell this story. But when I first got started in real estate and I was at a sales meeting one day and, and they were talking about Warren Buffett and he was on a success magazine panel with Darren Hardy. And so that somebody had asked uh, Warren, they said, Warren, how did you know when you became successful in life? And Warren said, you never know how truly success or you never know how successful you've been until you die. And a lot of people, they, they, Warren is said to be an atheist, right? Whether he is or he isn't, I've never had that conversation, but he doesn't really talk about God and afterlife. He's more, you know, direct and to the point. And he said, you'll never know how successful you've been until you die and you see how many people come to your funeral. And so people are like, what? Warren talking about afterlife? But he said, but you'll never know how truly successful you've been in life until you see how many of those people cry at your funeral. Mm -hmm. Why? Is because those are the people who you've truly impacted their lives. And mm -hmm. when I heard that, it was early on in my real estate career, and I was like, man, that's that. And it goes to your point of significance. How much mm -hmm. significance did you have? How much impact did you have on their lives? And so I think that's so powerful. And I love that you said that in a different type of context. And I think any Anyone can relate to that. You you can go out. I shared this story with you earlier about my buddy Sal, and I was with um, Sal and Carlos at their conference a couple weeks ago mm -hmm. in Phoenix. Seven hundred fifty eight hundred people there. There, and it's a huge huge real estate conference. I mean, they, they're they're two of the top guys. Cody Spurber was there. Sean Terry. I mean, they had the top top Max Maxwell. They had the top top guys out there. And when you get around people, and, and Carlos is like one of his main messages. He's going to do this at my boot camp is the three S's of, signif of, of, of entrepreneurship. Survival, status, significance. Like, you're just trying to survive. And then you do, and then you make it. And then you, because we were riding in Carlos's Rolls Royce that day when he was t telling me this story. And we went to lunch, and he's like, then it's status. You're like, dude, I'm buying it. I'm wearing the watch. I'm driving the car. And then you quickly understand, like, this doesn't really mean a whole lot. Like, it, and for guys like that, it, when it doesn't move the needle for you, it's, it's okay to have those things. But when it doesn't move the needle for you and you're more concerned, at how can I help somebody on my team win and be successful and experience more personally, professionally, and financially than, they've, than they could ever experience not being on my team? When you do that, dude, I'm telling you, it's a lot more fulfilling laying your head down on the pillow at nighttime than it is knowing that I've got a, I've got a Lamborghini SUV or I've got a Rolls Wraith, or I drive, or whatever it is you have, a car, a home, a boat, whatever. Far more fulfilling knowing that I've made an impact on another human being and, I, and my team, and I've helped them win at levels they've never won at before. Oh, man, there's so much fire in that. Let me ask for people that say, you know what, I love everything that you're talking about, Ken, but financially, I'm just not there, right? Mm -hmm. Financially, I just don't have the money to go to these masterminds, right? Like you told me beforehand, you were like, man, I just picked up and, and I went down to Miami for three days. You know, I'm out here and, and they're saying, but listen, I got three kids and like, I just don't even have the money to invest into myself, uh, to be around people that is that successful. What is the thing that you say to people when they tell you that they just don't have the financials to do it? A couple things. This book right here by Donald Miller, Business Made Simple, um, 10X Rule, Expert Secrets, Traction, Think and Grow Rich, Three Feet from Gold. Dude, I've got books on books on books on books sitting right next to me right now. This is 15 bucks. I bought one for everybody on my team. Phenomenal business book, by the way. Um, books don't cost anything. Podcasts don't cost anything. There's an episode. Ken Coleman is, Ken does the Entree Leadership Podcast for Dave Ramsey. Yeah. I've been friends yeah. with Ken for a long time because my best friend, Nate, who's my business development guy, they worked together for John year for years, for years and years and years. And I met Nate at a John Maxwell event. Ken did a, Ken did a podcast in 2015 with Patrick Lencioni, who wrote Five Dysfunctions of a Team, The Advantage, Ideal Team Player, some of the most phenomenal um, leadership and culture books out there. There's a podcast they did. I've listened to it over 150 times. Wow. Dude, I can quote the podcast as good as Pat Lencioni can. So people are like, dude, this sounds, this is so phenomenal. This stuff you're giving us in is so, well, it's, it's just stuff that I've gotten from guys like Simon Sinek and, 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 and Grant and Dave Ramsey and Brad Lee and you and Greg Reed and Sharon Lecter and Anthony Trucks and, Carl, and all these amazing people, Donald Miller, it's just, it's just stuff that over the years I've continually fed myself to grow right. myself. So that, that's, that's where it comes from. 
Man, I, I love it. And, and I think enough people always say YouTube University, right? And I told mm -hmm. you at the beginning of how, for me, even getting into real estate in the beginning, it was that was what I did. I went to YouTube. Mm -hmm. I was searching. And I think a lot of people right now are going to YouTube and they're searching, but they're not understanding that you have to take action on something. Because if you continuously b become a consumer, at the end of the day, you'll have That's overload. Right. You got to take That's action right. on something. That's right. right. So, and so go ahead. No, I was going to say, you know, what, what I told you earlier, in October of 2019, I never heard of Grant Cardone. Didn't know who he was, never heard of him. I saw it. I saw an ad on Instagram, and I'm like, who is this cat? I don't see very many guys. Josh York, if you haven't heard of Josh York from Gym Guys, Josh is a real good friend of mine. He's one of those guys, I'm like, where did this guy come from? How does he – I don't get around guys that have much more energy or passion than I do. Josh is one of those guys. Um, Grant Cardone, I'm looking at this. I'm like, who is this cat? I've, I've never heard of him before. I started following him on Instagram. A week and a half later, I'm on a free webinar on a Saturday. I know what he's going to pitch. It was a 90-minute webinar, right? It's a 90-minute webinar. Two hours later, he hasn't even breathed yet. Dude, he's just cranking out value. And I'm like, who is this guy? If right. you'll shut up, I'll buy whatever you're selling. Now, listen to this. For those of you guys listening to this today or watching this, it was a $997 mentorship, like a 12-week mentorship. That was a stretch for me. The still, it was a stretch, like a thousand bucks. I don't know this guy. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a stab and I'm gonna sign up for this. It wasn't like, oh, it's just a grand. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna do it. No, it was it was it was still a thousand bucks. Now it was nine ninety seven, so it didn't have a comma in it, but it was close enough to get me like, hmm. Right. But I, I pulled my credit card out. I got in the mentorship. I hopped on a call on Monday night. Now listen to this story. I had a $3 million commercial deal that I was working. It was the largest single paycheck I've ever gotten. It was a $78,720 commission. Now, I, th this is the power of proximity and the power of learning from people who have been places you've never been. On Monday afternoon, we get an appraisal in on that property. I'm representing the buyer, okay? I, got, I have the buyer. The, the property's unlisted. It's, it, it is an Asian, 72-year-old Asian man selling this property who does not speak English. I ha We have to go through his 22-year-old grad student daughter at, in Georgia. She's, our, she's the representation. $3 million contract, we're closing on Wednesday. The appraisal comes back in a few days before, three days before the closing on Monday at $2.625 million dollars. We're three. Yes, exactly right. That's exact. You're 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 you get it. My freaking deal's dead. Like this is this right. whole deal is dead. Blown up. So we're three hundred and seventy five thousand dollars short. Well, he thinks that the bank, since the bank did the appraisal, they did that on purpose, and he's not selling the building for less than three million bucks. So that's Monday afternoon. I yeah. hop on a call Monday night, my first mentorship with Grant, and what does Grant do? He pitches ten x boot camp in Miami four days later. That's another four grand. And I'm, right. I'm, I'm literally sitting in my chair thinking, if I'm going to take a chance, it's going to be right now. And he's talking about real estate, and he's the real estate guy. And I'm like, okay. And he says, if you come to Miami to 10X Boot Camp, I'm going to do a private Q&A on Saturday for all the people that sign up to come down. There was 25 or 30 of us. So I, I spend another three or four grand. I mean, I'm $6,000 in with Grant in a week. And, and it's not right. like I got, it's not like I got, oh, it's six grand laying under the, you know, my passport right here in my wallet. That's a stretch. That was a huge, I can't even begin to tell people how big of a huge stretch that was for me. But I took a chance on me. I invested right. in me. I fly to Miami. I fly to Miami. Three, this is three days later, dude. I've got a $3 million deal that's blown up. It's a $78,720. I can tell you exactly what the HUD looked like. I, I fly down there on Friday afternoon after 10X boot camp all day. I'm like, where in the hell has this been my whole life? Where did this guy come from? Saturday morning, I go back in. They're pitching Cardinal licensee, which I'm one of Grant's. I was one of Grant's first $25,000 licensees. They're pitching it. I walk into a hallway, and I run into Grant. And there's only three or four of us in this private hallway. And he ain't, he's not but about five foot five, right? He's a little bit of a dude. He points his finger out in my face. He goes, what are you here for? And I said, I want to blow the lid off my mindset of what's a lot of money because I want to be able to help church planters and pastors who struggle to be able to plant churches because they don't have the finances, number one. Number two, I want to scale my real estate team. 
And he spent five minutes with me. And he goes, Ken, if you'll let me, I'll help you. And and they're 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 rushing him into he's that he's on stage next, right? They're rushing him in. You're right. An hour later, I go into a QA with Grant. And I grab the mic, because dude, I, I got a three million dollar commercial deal. It's a seventy eight thousand dollar deal on the line. So I grab the mic and I got I'm and he goes and he he calls me preacher, right? He goes, Hey preacher, what's your question? Because we just spent five minutes together. And I told him that I pitched the whole deal to him. I said, Here's what I got. And I pitched it and he goes, Just buy the building. He goes, if your client overpays for the building, somebody will overpay for it when, when he sells it. And I was like, I just didn't make sense to me because I'm a real estate guy, right? Yeah. I'm like, what? And yeah. he just leans in. He goes, Ken, if you overpay for the building right now, somebody will overpay for it when you sell it. So we get done at 5 o'clock, dude. I call my client on the phone who's an African yeah. businessman in Atlanta. And I go, dude, I'm down here in Miami at this thing called 10X Boot Camp with this guy named Grant Cardone. He goes, oh, I love Grant Cardone. I've got money in Cardone Capital. I said, well, fantastic. You're going to love what, what he just told me to do. And I pitched the deal to him, and he goes, let's close it. I flew in on Monday at 1 o'clock in Atlanta. I had a 3 p.m. meeting. We negotiated a seller held second for the $375,000 we were short on the appraisal. We closed it on Wednesday. Wednesday afternoon, I had $78,720 in my bank account. The, the last six weeks of the year, I closed over $2 million more. dollars. I made $129,000 the last eight weeks of 2019. And my business took off from there. And it's never, it has not stopped since. All because Dang. I took a risk and... People go, you spent six grand? No, I spent eighty-four thousand dollars with Grant last year. Eighty-four thousand dollars, but that's been returned four or five fold already. Listen, you have to invest in yourself. It's not in, it's not giving Casanova money or or Grostack Drive or Grant or Anthony Trucks or Grant. No, you invest in yourself. And I promise you, when you do that and you bet on you, it will pay off in ways you never could have imagined. I'm li- and I'm living proof. Everything I just told you is is 100% truth. Man, so so much value there. It, and it's so crazy. Like, we got so many of the same friends and so many of the same stories. This is, yeah. I think that anybody can recognize that, though. Anytime you take a risk and you get out of your comfort zone, nobody ever regrets it. Right? Mm. We only, the, the anxiety is the worry about what could happen. But those things never even happen at the end of the day because once you burn those boats, you figure out a way and the universe figures out a way to conspire to give you whatever you want. And then you look back on it and you're like, I made that happen. Yes, you did make that happen, but you have to understand that it was something that was put inside of you that said, hey, if I can even conceive it in the beginning, right, it's achievable, right? It's kind of like that Henry Ford quote, whether you think you can or you think you can't. But at the times that we think that we can, it always happened and we look back on it. But it was, again, us coming to life, right? I just seen a, a video and it was uh, by Naveen Jain and I'm sure you probably know mm-hmm, Naveen mm-hmm, he's that billionaire mm-hmm. he's been yep. at Thrive everything I met him mm-hmm. through Cole Hatter um, from Thrive but I seen a video that he did today and he talked about you know um, in life you have to understand that it's really like a heartbeat right and if you you have to understand that when the heartbeat when you look at the the meter it goes up down up down up down you never want to be living in your comfort zone because if you're living stagnant that means that you're it's not beating right so what does that mean that means that you're dying right Mm. so uh, understand that when you go up you're 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 living that status life but you got to stay humble because at the end of the day you know it's going to come back down but then even when it's down and you feel like you're when it rains it pours and you're at the bottom you have to understand that what it's gonna come back up you just got to be able to yeah. weather the storm and so i i love that man i love that perspective and i think there's so much value in that and somebody else should be pumped up right now to say i'm willing to take a risk right i'm willing to bet on myself because i know that at the end of the day it either has to work or it has to work right you talked about you talked about weathering the storms mm-hmm. relationships are always the key and there are three types of relationships every one of us need. Our community, like who's that? Seth Godin calls it the tribe. He wrote a book on called Tribes. Who's the tribe? Like who's the who's the the large group of people that you're journeying with? Number one's your community. Number one, number two is your circle. Like who's the ten or twelve people that are in my life that I'm doing life with on a consistent basis? And number three is my corner. Who's the one or two people that are in my life that know everything about me? There are no I secrets. Like they know everything, your community, your circle, and your corner. If you can get those three spheres of relationship right in your life, the days you don't want to go, because listen, I don't feel like doing it every day. 
There, there are days I get up and I'm like, ugh. I mean, I'm down 57 pounds in the last year going to F45. Hey, there are days I don't feel like getting up and going to the gym. Guess what? My ass gets up and I go to the gym. Because I know that, and people go, Ken, why do you put all these sweaty pictures of you in your workout? Why are you always doing Instagram lives? You know why? Because the day I miss, my phone blows up and they go, hey, why weren't you in the gym today? It's all about accountability. But when you get those three spheres of relationships right in your life, it'll take you places you never thought you could go. Man, I love it. There's so much value. And I keep saying that because, again, I don't, and anybody who's watching or listening at this, you know that it's, I feel a lot of times I'm always the guy that's like, how do you have so much energy, right? But when you find somebody that matches your energy, it's almost like love at first sight, right? It, on, it, it's amazing. So I love it. Let me ask you this, though. As wise as you are now and how much you've learned over these last 30 years and in, in the ministry and entrepreneurship and leading teams and doing consulting, I always ask the question if there's anything that you would change. But I had to I had to restructure that because a lot of people would say, no, I wouldn't change anything. Mm-hmm. And I always call BS on that. I'm like, if there was one thing, we all would change something. But right. I understand and I respect it. So the way that I ask it now is if there was one thing that you wish that you would have implemented it sooner to accelerate your path on your journey and your dream of where you are today what would that one thing be well i mean like i said i was 20 probably in my late 20s when i figured out the the i don't even know that i had it figured out i just i think god just scripture says that the lord orders the footsteps of the righteous so i think that there were moments where my path would intersect with other I mean, I'm talking about world-class people in, in every, from working, you know, referee in basketball to umpire in baseball. I mean, one of my friends has been in the big leagues for 20 years. One of my best friends was a big league umpire. He worked 600 games and he's a big division one guy. I mean, everything that I've had in my life is always geared around people that are in that field that are at the top of their game. Um, it probably would be, and this is the one thing that Grant talks about that I agree with him wholeheartedly, is college isn't for everybody. One of my best friends played basketball at Duke. Um, He's one of the top orthodontists in Atlanta. Um, Who's who's, who's that? Mark Causey. He played with Boozer and all those guys. Yes, so he played with with Boozer and Dunleavy and all those guys. And Mark was – he went to my high school. He's younger than I am. He went to my high school. He was a player of the year in the state of Georgia. Um, And, you know, Mark says – I tell Mark all the time, if you're not going to be an orthodontist or something where you have to have a medical degree or some kind of an attorney, then listen – Go find what you're passionate about doing and snuggle right up to the best person in the world that does what you want to do. I don't care if you have to, listen, you can work for free for four years or you can pay an institution and go into debt $120,000 and come out with a degree that's going to make you, I've got a, I've got somebody that I, that I, that I work out with who has a PhD and she's a cancer researcher. She makes $55,000 a year. I'm like, now, granted, if you want to do that, I understand that. That's a calling more than it is. She's not doing that to make a lot of money. But find somebody that is unbelievably gifted at what you're doing and learn from them. So that's probably the one thing that I would have done earlier in life was understood that, was was understand that I need to be around the people that are doing this at a level no one else is doing it and serving and adding value to them so I can learn the things that they know so I can circumvent the process in my life and not have to make as many of the mistakes that I, that I obviously people go, Ken, you're, man, you're super wise. That's because I've made a lot of mistakes. I've jacked a lot of stuff up and I've learned a lot of ways, not how to do things or how to, how to do things wrong and been around some pretty amazing people. Man, I love, I love it. That's again, so much wisdom. Let me ask you, you've been in real estate now for how long now? Uh, since 19, since 2000. Uh, uh, 2000. Well, I mean, I've been in real estate since 2000, um, not full time, but I've been in real estate full time for probably about 15 years since then. Got it. So, and, and, and I, I want to know, so you had your mortgage license and you decided to get into mm-hmm. the real estate side and, and mm-hmm. you were going to be a broker and build teams all around the world. Why did you decide to partner up? Cause you're at EXP Realty now. I am. Right. I am. Yeah. Why did you decide to partner up with EXP? Well, I, I flew out to um, I flew out to Napa and had lunch with a guy named Brent Gove, 
And Brent sat down and shared with me the compensation plan and what EXP was doing. And with my platform, with what we do and how we, we don't, we, we, we really gear towards business professionals in general. People go, what's your avatar? Listen, if you own a business and you want to build confidence, gain clarity and create community, we're your tribe. I don't care if you're a realtor. I don't care if you're a, if you own a trash company. I don't care if you're a teacher. I don't care what you do. But when I sat down with Brent and he began to explain to me, number one, the, the benefits of being a part of the EXP nation, the benefits of being with, you know, a, a really a visionary like Glenn Sanford, who's a friend of mine as well. Um, being in that tribe and then the compensation plan, not just for me as a broker, because I was in the process of getting my broker's license on the real estate side in Georgia and in Alabama, but the benefit of my team. That's the only, the only reason I built a real estate team was because I, real, I don't get up in the morning going, woo, can't wait to do real estate. I get up in the morning going, woo, can't wait to help my team get better today. I can't wait because every deal that I get in, I just hand it to one of my team members. I just hand it to them. I, I started my real estate team to help people who have never made six figures a year make six figures for the first time in their life. That was my, my only reason in doing real estate. And since I've been doing this for so long and I've got so many, you know, clients and so many relationships in the real estate game, it was silly for me not to continue to do it. So that's why I made that transition over to EXP. And and literally, I was halfway through my real estate brokers course at University of Alabama and stopped to go to EXP. Wow. And what do so how long have you now been with EXP? Just about five or six months. Not long. Not a not a ton of time. And I've got seven, eight eight agents, nine agents around the country under me. I've got a call with another one in LA who's going to be big time because they're probably going to pull another 12 to 15 agents with them. Wow. Yep. And so talk to me about what has been your experience since you've been over here, because that's, it's a new, it's a new concept, a new mm-hmm. model, mm-hmm. right? For a lot of people. So for you, knowing that you could have had your own brokerage license, what has been your experience since you've been over here for not only you, but what do you feel like the vibe has been for your agents? Are you feeling like that they're loving it just as much? Yeah. Yeah. And the one, like the one thing it? that, the one thing that I really love about it, Casanova is, is it's, it's, it's like a nationwide community. Like, literally, we just got a referral from somebody in Texas. We just sent somebody in Nashville a referral. We just sent somebody in Florida a referral. I mean, we're constantly networking with all these agents around the country. Um, and, then the, and then the ability to be able to learn from not only your local broker, but to be able to learn from some of the top brokers nationwide. I mean, Brent Gove was the number one Keller Williams agent in the state of California several years. Jay Kinder. Jay is a friend of mine. I've had Jay on my podcast. Jay was the number one Coldwell Banker agent in the country. So you're not just learning from guys who are good. You're learning from the best of the best. Again, leans into everything we've talked about for the last 30 or 45 minutes. You're learning from the best of the best of the best. And when you can lean into, and these guys want to help people. That's the one thing about Brent and Jay and these guys that I've gotten connected, um, Sheila Verjean, all of these people that I've gotten connected with, they, they want to help you be successful. Right. I love yeah. it. I always say at EXP, uh, for what I've, what I've experienced, what I've learned, it's collaboration over competition. Yes. All day thousand, a thousand percent. thousand percent. Yeah. No, and I'm going to steal, I'm gonna steal that line, man. That's going to be my new line. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you've already given me so much wisdom and nuggets that I'm definitely, what do they say? I think Picasso says, if it, oh, I can't remember. I don't want to butcher it. But it's like uh, the, the expert steal. Oh, man, I, I got to figure it out. But don't whoever's watching or listening, go look it up. And there's a famous line about that. But basically, everyone, you know, borrows and steals. Nothing's new or under the right. sun. But just like right. you said, everything that you're teaching, they say the best way to learn is to teach, right? And so everything yep. that you're learning from your community, right, from that tribe that you have, from your corner, and then you can give it back to somebody else because again there's always going to be another generation after you mm-hmm. right and it's about how do you set the how do you set them up whether they're in real estate whether they're just in sales whether no matter what they're doing how do you set them up to be successful well you have to go out you have to learn right and you have to be able to kill and then at the end of the mm-hmm. day you bring that mm-hmm. food back and you teach someone else how to go out and be a lion and so i love it man uh, this again has been a phenomenal conversation first i want to say thank you if nobody else has told you today my brother i want to say I, I appreciate, appreciate you. That, Thank you. For anyone else that is looking to stay connected with you, we'll put all of the links in the show notes, but where can they find you at? 
Yeah, at Ken Jocelyn, K-E-N-J-O-S-L-I-N on Instagram, um, growstackdrive.com um, is our, is our you know, coaching and consulting. Um, we've got our boot camp coming up in June. I don't know when this is going to air, um, but June the 11th through the 13th, I've got 12 tickets left. That's it, dude. It's going to be sold out. We keep our events at 60 people. That's it. Because when you go into a 60-person event and you're listening to the people that we're bringing in and you have an opportunity to, not just rub shoulders with people like Sharon Lecter, co-author of Rich Dad Poor Dad, Greg Reed. I, it just, I mean, it's it, it it is it's it's literally insane the people that we're bringing in the room for you to be able to learn from um, over two and a half days for a ticket price of four nine nine seven. It's it's absolutely insane, and for you to be able to not just rub shoulders with, but also have the opportunity to build relationship with. Because this can be a game changer in your life if you take the risk and invest in yourself. There you have it. We'll make sure that we put those links in the show notes. And I definitely uh, co-sign everything that you said. I mean, it's the association, the power of proximity. Yes. Right? A lot of the times we want to be acknowledged by our mentors. So this is a, a great opportunity yeah. when you're at something that's intimate like that for you to let people know, hey, I'm here. I want to invest into myself. I want to mm -hmm. take action. And I would love to have your mentorship or just the relationship. Who knows where it goes? Don't go in looking for anything. Go in, just like you said, looking mm -hmm. to give value. Yes. Right. And somebody else, they'll see that. And one of the things that I've learned with this, and it goes right along with what you said of like successful people love um, to be significant first and foremost. But it was one thing that a mentor told me early on in my real estate career. And he said, you got to understand that persistence respects persistence. Yes. Right. And so what that means is sometimes we, we don't want to be too persistent and following up. But whoever it is that is successful, they understand what it was like to be in your shoes because they were there at one point in time. Nobody starts off from 75, right. 80. 80, 100. They were all at square one or zero one day. And so that's what I always love to think about. Even if you're being persistent or people want to see how far are you willing to go, right? Remember back in the day, there was that uh, P. Diddy that everybody was talking about. This was 20 years ago. But remember, they walked like to, to Brooklyn for some cheesecake or something. Mm -hmm. But that was what he wanted to see. How, how much were they willing to go the extra mile? How bad did they want it? Yeah. And so this is your opportunity to show how bad you want it. Yeah. So man, I appreciate again, your time, my friend. Yeah, I absolutely, my brother. And um, yeah, so the last thing that that um, yeah, the last thing that I would ask you for somebody who is, you know, still have that little voice in their head that says that they're not smart enough, they're not strong mm -hmm. enough, or maybe they just don't have enough resources. What's the one thing that you would leave that person with to get them to just take action? You have everything within you god designed you with everything within you to live out the purpose that he has for you and you, when you think at it when you think about it from this standpoint god didn't god didn't create you to be like anyone else out of all the fingerprints on the planet yours is unique you have your own specific purpose you have your own specific way of making a positive impact not just in your home not just in your community in your city, but in the world. You have that. No one else has your uniqueness. You shine and you be you and make a positive difference in the world. We need it now more than ever before. I love it. There you have it. Or just as he said, Dream Nation, you got to take action. You're unique. Because otherwise, if you don't, that dream that you have, and we all have a dream, it will only merely be a fantasy. That's yes. all for this one. We'll catch you on the next one. That's all we got for this episode. Thank you for sticking around. That truly means a lot to me. And hopefully that means that we delivered massive value on this one. If you haven't already, the way that you could say thank you to myself and the team is just by heading over to iTunes and leaving a review and a rating. That's what iTunes loves to see. That's how we get out there even more. And I would definitely, definitely be grateful for it. I know the team would as well. Do me a favor and head on over to dreamnationpodcast.com. That's where you're going to be able to find all of the resources that we talked about in today's episode, as well as more exclusive content. And you'll also be able to sign up to our email list where we have more exclusive content. And we always love to hear the feedback from you all because you're our tribe. So remember, in the dream we trust, we'll see you on the flip side.